Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hello. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I work at uh, Myrick O'Connell. There are a bunch of us, 55 of us. We've got offices in Westboro and, and Worcester. A bunch of people from Northboro work there. Todd Helwig, uh, Joe Hamilton, I think Rich Van Nostrand, and Diane Powers, who some of you know, actually runs Myrick O'Connell, uh, although she's not an attorney. She's, she does it all. So I'm the elder law person. Uh, the reason why I, we are here this evening, this is in, in some ways an ad for the other speakers. Um, uh, I am doing this, these presentations in conjunction with folks from the, the Massachusetts Alzheimer's Association and uh, um, Shelby Marshall, who, is, who, who has a, a business, her day job, she has a business as a home care person, but she's on the, the Alzheimer's uh, Partnership, is here to talk about the Alzheimer's Association. And I'm also doing this with Bay Path Elder Services. Bay Path Elder Services, how many of you here have heard of Bay Path Elder Services? Raise your hand. Ah, though this is a good introduction for you. Bay Path Elder Services is the entity, uh, it's called an ASAP, an Aging Services Access Point. It is the nonprofit entity that serves services 14 communities, including this one, and in those communities is basically the funnel through which all federal and state elder services money comes, including in many cases the mass health money. Uh, so if, if I could tell you anything as kind of the, the lesson of this presentation, it's you want to be their friend, right, at Bay Path Elder Services. They, they, are, they provide a variety of services, and, and uh, they're going to be, she, and, and Mary Frayne Johnston who, from Bay Path is going to be talking about some of those as they relate to tonight's topic. So um, we talked about and agreed to do a set of three presentations regarding Alzheimer's. Um, the first one talking about talking to, to talk to issues with folks who are worried about it. You're worried about it. You don't necessarily have it, right? You don't necessarily know somebody that, ha or you probably know somebody who has it. It's like everybody seems to know somebody. But, if you, but you're worried about it. And we wanted to talk about the things that you may want to do and the things you probably need to know about uh, if you want to reduce your chances of getting Alzheimer's in the future and if you want to just plan for it. And so that's the purpose of tonight's uh, discussion. The second, the, in the second presentation, we're going to be talking about early stages, Alzheimer's in its early, it, or dementia in its early stages. Also, many people hear those two terms, Alzheimer's and dementia, and think, so is, it, is that the, are those two different things? Are the, what is that? D dementia is not a disease. D dementia is a set of symptoms symptoms that we all see and that we associate with Alzheimer's, cognitive symptoms, some physical symptoms. Alzheimer's is the greatest single cause of dementia. Yeah, something like 80% of folks with dementia have it because of Alzheimer's, they, but they might also have it because of something called Lewy body disease uh, or because of Parkinson's or a number of other things, right? So in the second presentation, we're going to be talking about all, uh, dementia in its early stages. Uh, especially that caused by Alzheimer's and kind of how to deal with that. And then in the third one, we're really going to talk about folks who have dementia in the later stages. Um, and in all of these cases, we're going to be kind of focusing on planning to stay home because that's really kind of the goal of everybody. I know so much of the work that I do as an elder law attorney is around Alzheimer's. It's people who are worried about it. It's people who have got it, who, have got some, who know somebody or have a loved one who has it and they're worried about this whole cluster of issues. And their biggest goal is to stay out of a nursing home and to stay home, right? So the goal of this really is to try to figure out how to stay home. So um, Frank and Mary are the couple that I often talk about. Um, they are, uh, they own a house. 
They're make-believe. Well, like, they're kind of make-believe. They're becoming real. I've been talking about them for so many years. But they own a house. It's worth $300,000. It was going down. Now it's going back up in value. They're very excited. Frank has a small IRA, $150,000. They have a joint annuity of $100,000. They've got savings of $75,000. They've got total assets of $625,000. Frank uh, gets two checks. He gets a Social Security check of $1,500 a month, and he's got a small pension. So he's got a total of income of $500. Mary gets $750 a month, so their total income is $2,750, right? That's not big money, but it's not nothing, so it's a little over $30,000 a year. Their mortgage is paid. They're basically going to be okay uh, as long as a disaster does not befall them. And their uh, estate plan is very simple. They have three children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And their goal in life is they want to live until they die in their house, they want to be buried in the backyard, and then if one of them dies, they want everything to go to the other one, and then after that, they want it to be divided up among their kids. Does any of this sound familiar? Right? This is kind of where a lot of people are. So oftentimes, and, and so they're going to be okay. As a matter of fact, while physically they're not going to be great if they have heart problems or cancer, financially they're going to be okay, right? Because Medicare is going to cover all that, right? Medicare, the point of Medicare, when it was created back in the 60s, um, was to help uh, old people not go broke. Um, in 1960, before Medicare, Medicare was adopted, uh, over 30 percent, I think it was 32 percent, of all people in this country over age 60 were defined that were poor. Uh, right now, that number is 7 percent. 7 percent. The major reason is Medicare, because in the old days, of course, uh, um, people, older people could never get health insurance. So if you had any kind of serious disease, Bad enough that you had the disease, you also went broke. Today, that only happens if you have Alzheimer's or one of those other things that causes dementia. Because while Medicare will pay for, uh, if you've got cancer, they'll pay for biopsies and operations and chemo and all kinds of things, right? Um, or if you, and if you have heart problems, you know, you're going to get stents and this and that. But if you, if you, if you can't, if you need help dressing at home, or going to the bathroom because you've got dementia, you're out of luck because Medicare does not cover the cost of so-called non-skilled care, and that's what all of that stuff is about, right? So the, for, for, for Frank and Mary, the big concern is typically about what happens if I get Alzheimer's, or, or really, what happens if I get dementia. Now, as I, as I tell folks, as I've told Frank and Mary many times, and I'm telling you, uh, when people will say to me, well, what do I need for legal documents? Really, you only need two, and I'm telling you this now, um, be, and, and, and they are very simple, a power of attorney and a health care proxy. The only two things that you really need are the documents that will help somebody else make decisions for you if you can't. And that's what a power of attorney allows somebody else to make all, decision, all legal decisions for you except health care decisions. And the health care proxy allows people, somebody to make a health care decision for you. As Frank and, Frank and Mary actually, uh, in this situation, don't even need a will. They don't even really need, the, if their estate plan is that when one dies, it all goes to the other one, and if both of them die, it all goes to their kids. Well, that, that's what happens, actually, if you don't have a will. That's what the rules of intestacy are, the rules that would apply to you if you don't have a will. But, and, and they don't affect you until you're dead. These documents affect you while you're alive. So these are the two things. So I urge you, talk to your attorney. These are very, very inexpensive documents to get done, right? And everybody should have them. Now, I often talk to people who are also concerned about asset structuring, restructuring because they're concerned about Alzheimer's. I'm going to talk about that at the end, but just as a preview, the moral of the story is if you're Frank and Mary, uh, if you're, and you've got their assets, you really don't have to do all kinds of advanced planning and all this other stuff. What you need to do is you need to keep yourself in shape, right? And do all of the things that you can do to reduce the chance that you might get Alzheimer's. Um, uh, so we've talked about the fact that Medicare doesn't cover this. The people who really can help you in terms of figuring out this issue are the folks at the Alzheimer's Association. And as I've said, in, in many ways, this program is an ad for the Alzheimer's Association because I think for my clients, who are so worried about this. I can help them in the short run, but in the long run, the real issue is to figure out the, 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 the drugs that can help slow this thing down so that dementia doesn't kick in, 
until you're 105, at which point, well, you know, who cares, right? Uh, and, and also to help you and those you love at the time that someone has actually got Alzheimer's, and that's really what the Alzheimer's Association is about. So, Shelby Marshall. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to be here and to uh, represent the Alzheimer's Association as a member of the partnership th uh, through Worcester. Um, fundamentally, Alzheimer's Association is a wonderful, uh, largely untapped resource uh, that you all have access to. And it's a resource that you can access very independently on your own time through uh, alz.org, as you can see here on the screen, or through um, calling the, uh, the office at any time. Um, it's a, it's a vast resource, um, not enough time to go into tonight, but they have um, a number of uh, workshops, uh, uh, caregiver uh, groups, uh, uh, coping groups, um, so a, a tr tremendous a a excuse me, um, resource uh, for you, for your loved ones, um, as well as for neighbors and friends, and I encourage you to check them out online. 